Hey. Hey. Hey, I know you. What are you doing here? I know you. You're that famous hacker. <laughs> hey, man. <laughs> You're that other famous hacker who I I work with. Hey, who's Greg? Um, I don't know. Hi, Greg. Hi, Matt. Hi, Greg. Hi, Matt. Uh oh, is Justin gonna be here? Hey. So, wow, there's quite a few people. Hello, everybody. Hang on. I'm just getting JJ, who's the SIG chair, to come in. Wow, there's a lot of people that joined. Hey, everybody, how's everyone doing? You can turn your video on and say hello or, or use the chat. This is awesome though. There's a lot of people here now. Is this working now? Yes. So. Hey, Justin. Good. Hey, sorry. I'm so I had glad some... you joined. I was really freaking out. I was like, oh no, am I going to have to run this thing now? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's, um, uh, yeah, Zoom seems to have new and interesting ways to have issues. Uh, from every time I I use it, I don't use it very often, other than this meeting, really. Um, but yeah, it, it uh, took o over a minute to let me click the button to set up my audio for some reason. I have that time all the time, man. With Zoom. Yeah. Well, um, great. How's everyone else? Yeah, good. Yeah, good. Hey, Daniel. Hey, JJ. Hey, man. I think JJ is just screenshotted himself. <laughs> uh, my bad is, uh, I am also in, uh, I mean, good news. So, that's one good part. Uh, I didn't. Uh, Justin, can you add me to the I I can't. You sound very robotic. I can't understand anything you're saying. Oh, he asked. The, I'm pretty sure. I don't know. I, I I can sort of talk robot. I think JJ asked to be added to the calendar. Yeah. You're really badly breaking up, JJ. So it's good to see all my social promotion got some new faces in here. Anyway, I recognize a lot of you. Oh, hey, Andreas. Wow, hey, man, thanks for coming in. Right. Thanks for having me, mate. Andreas from Red Hat here, the man himself. <laughs> Not even half as famous as you make it sound. <laughs> <laughs> well, I don't know, you're a pretty cool guy who doesn't afraid of anything. <laughs> That's awesome. So um a lot of you haven't actually joined one of these meetings before um 
do, do you kind of want to give an intro, Justin, to what, what we do? Sure. Um, so this is uh, the security focused uh, SIG that's part of the Cloud Native Computing Foundation, um, which is the, the biggest uh, part of the Linux Foundation. So this focuses on all the sort of cloud um, based technologies and things like that, Docker's, Kubernetes, and so on have a particular influence in the community. And uh, about maybe three years or so ago, um, a group of people got together, uh, uh, JJ, Sarah, um, uh, and a few others, and formed uh, SIG Security as, as a group. They got some interested people together. And it's kind of grown from there to uh, have a lot of participants. I don't know exactly how many, but probably in the, I would guess in the hundreds of participants have come to a meeting and done things. Um, there's, uh, it's, it's a very welcoming, a very nice community. Um, within that community, uh, there are also a few people that, uh, in addition to being things like chairs, there are a few people that are what's called tech leads, um, which I, I'm one of those where it's basically somebody who's done a lot of work in the community and drives initiatives and issues. So um, I uh, created the way that, like the first cut at how we do security assessments for projects uh, and try to give uh, the TOC and the projects themselves like good security feedback for if they're doing the right things and so on. Um, and I've also worked on a, a bunch of other initiatives related to supply chain security and stuff like that. And I also have, um, I, I created um, two of the uh, CNCF projects, the Tough project and the Intoto project. Um, and I've just been active overall in the community with like the Biffy Spire folks and lots of other folks in there. Um, and I moved to Shanghai in September and so uh as part of um me being here i'm no longer able to make the normal meeting so um, i'm excited that we've been able to start to get some people together uh, because we'd always talked about trying to have a meeting at a time that was more convenient for people uh, in uh the sort of like uh chinese australia that time frame and i'm glad that like uh, chinese australia happened. We call it Asia Pack. <laughs> Asia Pack, all right. <laughs> yeah, you <you're> American. <laughs> that was awesome. No, oh, me too. I'm I'm stoked to have more people here. Um, should we do like some introductions for the new new folks? Um, hi, I'm I'm Matt. Since I'll I'll just go since I was talking already. Um, I actually work with Andrew, who's on this call um, at a company called Accelera. We do cloud native security and DevSecOps and help help other companies realize that. Um, yeah. Maybe maybe someone else can go now. Hi, I'm Andrew, um, originally from New Zealand. Uh, I do some cloud native consulting work with Matt uh, at Accelerate and also run Morningstar Security and like to create open source security tools. I'll jump in. Um, I'm Daniel, also originally from New Zealand. I've been in Melbourne about nine years. Um, work for Seek currently, kind of the container and Kubernetes security SME as part of the security team here. Um, just variously involved in um, open source bits and pieces and kind of wanted to formalize that a bit more and a SIG like this made a lot of sense to me. Um, I've been in the last couple of meetings, I think from our inception. Yeah, hi, I'm, I'm Andreas. Thank you, Daniel. Um, I'm Andreas, I work for, for Red Hat and I was found or thought security is uh, very boring to be honest and then Matt uh, told me about a capture the flag event that he wants to run. And uh, so I got uh, more into, into that. And then um, I started to check out based on, on Matt's recommendation, the SIG security as well. 
and you know, I, I joined the the Slack channel, and I work on these uh, current supply chain uh, white paper as well that we're running under. I think it's issue five ten on GitHub, and yeah, it's just it's just great to be part of that and learn a lot, to be honest. And uh, yeah, I started off reading the the cloud native um, security white paper, and that sort of got me on on track, and I found it quite interesting. So uh, yeah, that's me. Thank you. Um, hi, my name is Frederick. Uh, I'm from India. Uh, I've been working on the SOC side, on the blue team side of things. Um, now I'm getting into the open source and uh, the cloud security, the Kubernetes security, and uh, I'm exploring the infrastructure security side of things. Uh, G'day, uh, another Matt here. Um, my background was mostly on-prem stuff and a little bit of cloud. And I've just taken a new role where it's all cloud. So had a general interest in security, but want to take that a bit further now. Yeah. Okay, hi, I'm uh, Dean Awari. I'm, uh, I live in Japan. I had uh, cloud native security at Checkpoint. And I, you know, I'm in charge of obviously uh, working to evangelize cloud security, but also on all the, you know, all the security for container serverless and everything else. So look forward to see how we can, uh, you know, add stuff in the, in the SIG. So I'm excited to have a SIG and APAC for the first time. It's been typically in the US in the cube cons and everything else. So it sounds, sounds exciting. Awesome. So I am, I don't know if you can hear me. Uh, this is JJ. Um, like what Justin was saying, like we a few of us started the, started a group uh, to just start discussing about some of the security stuff early on um, it was originally called safe uh, we sort of followed the gun of moniker of uh, secure access for i mean safe access for everyone was safe but uh, uh, and then that got transitioned over to six security uh, over time uh, and then and now we, we have it here uh, it's a pretty uh, wide variety of group uh, and uh, uh, people from NIST, people from Cloud Security Alliance and a bunch of people participate in sharing uh, information and knowledge that's actually widely uh, widely practiced in industry and uh, some, of it is, uh, some of it is still in research. So uh, I'd highly encourage you to like drop in or uh, take a look at like some of the videos that uh, for the EMEA uh, sessions as well uh, because there's a bunch of stuff that goes on so we'll try and cross, cross pollinate as much as possible uh, matt's been pretty active uh, on, on this and i appreciate uh, all the effort he's done so far to get us into this zone yep that's me thanks and then the scaled agile framework stole the acronym safe yeah <laughs> No, uh, it was it was fun. That was a fun thing. I think uh, we still probably have like some documents that say safe, but I don't know. Cool. So that's all I had. Um, happy to be part of this group. Uh, happy to answer any questions. Uh, and like what Justin said, contributions are uh, super awesome. Welcome. Uh, there is also TOC updates that happen uh, every Tuesday, first Tuesday of every month. Kind of thing where as a group we consolidate every activity that's going on within the group and then give an update which is like a one slide version of what's going on with this group uh, so that is also something that i think people should pay attention to uh, if you want to know like a summary view of what's going on say for example in this version we sort of presented uh, that we took uh, uh, we converted the security white paper. Uh, somebody volunteered to convert this white paper to Chinese and that got merged and then it's finally available on the GitHub for consumption. Uh, 
we also had uh, uh, we also had additional members join like 56 different organizations or something so we show some stats around the membership count as well there uh, so bunch of good stuff there so if you want to drop in and listen you'll probably get a lot more information there we also did form a uh, secure supply chain working group uh, justin i think you might know about it if you want to give an update that would be good yeah um I, I don't I haven't been tracking it too closely because it's it's async with what's happening here but my uh, Santiago Torres Arias who um, was my PhD student and is a professor at Purdue now he founded the um, uh, he, he's he started uh, collecting all these materials and put it together and I know that they've kind of spun off into its own sort of sub entity that has a bunch of momentum while they're tracking this they have i don't know 80 or so different documented supply chain um attacks that they've looked at and things and i think that they're still looking for people to uh, participate in and help in that area um i know some of the more recent efforts have also looked at mitigations because i think there's there's a tendency um from a lot of especially kind of vendors in this space to overclaim. And so I think people are trying to uh like this working group is trying to help to um you know avoid the problems that we had for many years with people with firewall and antivirus vendors and everybody overclaiming and oh you know I use antivirus I don't need anything else I I use a firewall of course you know we just keep all the bad folks out and there's no problem. um but i think you know those are kind of laughable now but in the supply chain space i think there's still a lot of um uh you know a lot of people that that say they have these magic products that that don't really have them in practice um yeah so uh one other thing i want to mention about this uh sorry go ahead and if you have something else you want to say pj step in go ahead uh No, no. So a uh, couple of other updates also. Uh, carrying it from uh, EMEA is uh, uh, serverless security white paper is being kicked off. Uh, there is an effort, and there is a GitHub issue for that, or there is a doc for that. It's right now in a closed form. Uh, we'll start opening it up uh, once it gets a little bit more uh, traction. There is another effort that Brandon is working on, which is issue 551, uh, which is to put together a security map of all the projects. Uh, think of it as what white paper is for concept. Uh, security map is more of an implementation of like which projects do you use to solve which parts of uh, white paper. So uh, Brandon is working on that. Uh, if anyone's interested in this, we'll be super happy to take uh, help from any of you. Uh, those are those are kind of the updates they had can can i ask a question on on that yeah so um because i made a comment in the in the software supply chain um security white paper and i said it would be good to have actually to call out a project an open source project that delivers against that recommendation and there is now a uh, basic discussion going on we don't want to make it a tools sort of conversation and and i understand that and i don't want to make it a tools conversation either but i also didn't want that white paper to be just theoretical you know saying oh this is what you should do and then there's nothing out there that actually can help you accomplish that and and so mm-hmm. i just wanted to get your view on how to tackle that i might yeah. jump in here um if that's cool um so sure. i only just found out about it andreas but in relation to the cloud native security white paper at least there's a, a cloud native security map that's been worked on and it directly links to the theoretical components of the white paper against what's going to be in the map which is you know practical ways of implementing a particular thing so you know container scanning for example with with a variety of tooling such as aqua trivi or something else okay so that's a cncf <clears throat> approach is it that be cool if we do this generally for any white paper yeah i would say it's a slippery slope i don't mean to be against you i mean i think If you want to talk about scanners you can talk about the differences and our coverage and let them 
let people figure out which one they want to try. Because scanners, obviously, the thing with scanners is people kind of, they don't understand how it works. So, especially with supply chain. I mean, do you cover malware, CVE, CWEs? How do you find the chassis signatures and so forth? Um, if we start suggesting about trivia and everything else, then you're publishing Aqua and various vendors. And I think we should stay vendor neutral. That's a good point. So let's focus on education rather than promoting tools, in my okay. opinion. No, that was sort of the motivation for what? That was sort of the motivation I for don't. keeping the white white paper to be sorry, sorry, uh, tools agnostic. But I'll uh, being choppy, I'll just basically stop talking and just listen. Hey, so I'm looking at the um, CNCF um, list of supply chain security compromises, and it looks like there isn't really much in labels for the types of compromise. I mean, they've got like a column for the type, but it's really broad, like dev tooling or malicious maintainer. Um, so I think some more work could be done in identifying the types of attacks first, and then later that could be used to update the the other um, um, lists of tools and techniques. Maybe like a kind of I think there's a cloud native uh, attack framework that might be useful for that. Sorry, does that make sense? I, I think so. One one thing I'll say overall um, is it uh, the group is very good about being welcoming of people's ideas and suggestions, and the best thing to do is to reach out um, to the folks that are involved in this. I think there's probably a, like a sub Slack channel or something like this, specifically for the supply chain things to reach out and then, and then um, make these kinds of suggestions um, because there's no one here in this room who sort of has, or in this virtual chat room that has ownership of the, uh, of any of these or really has a, a strong uh, guiding hand. Uh, it, often there's a person who kind of emerges who helps to shape it into their vision, but um, getting all us, all of us to say, yeah, that sounds great is, is helpful, but um, it, it may be better to get, uh, to get the people that are responsible for it and have had their vision on this particular document or thing uh, move forward. Um, that all being said, one other thing I'd like to stress is that, uh, the way that things like the security assessment guidelines came about wasn't, it wasn't that I wouldn't ask someone for permission or whatever. It's that I saw people were struggling to get something together. There was sort of this design by committee thing that really wasn't making any progress. And so I basically just sat down and said, I'm going to do it. And I, I came back and produced something and people said, yeah, this is pretty good. And then they used it as a sort of 1.0 version that they're now revising into a better improved 2.0 version. So, um, you know, I, I think you shouldn't be afraid to kind of grab your own space and do, do things with it. But if people are actively kind of working on, a, on something, then, uh, you know, trying to talk with them first is, is probably a better better path forward. Okay, thank you. Sounds good. So is anybody working on the serverless security white paper? <laughs> yeah, there is, uh, there is active work going on. Uh, if you are interested, Matt, I can connect you with Aradhana, who is leading that effort. Yeah, no, no, I, I already connected with her, and I'm, I'm actually reviewing the white paper at the moment. I was just kind of yeah. just throwing it out there. Oh, perfect. If anyone here was was involved in it? Yeah. Got it. Okay. Cool. <clears throat> Hey, is anybody following the name collision vulnerability that Microsoft mentioned recently? 
where um, you can have a project that pulls containers from two different sources, maybe a public one and an internal Docker hub. And some people have figured out that if they can guess the names um, that are being used internally and then register them on, let's say Docker hub, right? Then they can own things. Yeah, um, so we've been pretty active as part of the Notary V2 redesign. Um, and the, the, the issue here, the reason why this is a, a problem deals with the way that they're sort of doing namespacing in that area. And we're, um, that probably sub discussion is probably the right place to have it unless there's going to be a big fragmentation, but, but um, Tuff addresses this. There's something in Tuff called, um, uh, I think it's tap four is is the right one, but there's a augmentation proposal for Tuff that deals with multiple repository um, situations and how you do namespace mapping when you have them. And so um, this directly addresses that. I can post a link in the chat just to say. Yeah, I mean, just as an education, uh, if anybody is interested in presenting the problem itself, uh, that'll be a good way to get engaged with the community and get them up to speed. Uh, and come, people will be more than open to, like, in one of the following sessions, we can probably have like a 10 or 15 minute uh, presentation about this that'll help the rest of the folks to understand. But if you want to do that, uh, if anybody is interested in doing that, we should just create an issue, uh, line them up as a talk in one of these sessions. And then uh, in that process, I think we could also talk about like the ways to address that as well. What do you think? Just you, you really, yeah, I mean, we could do that. Um, to actually address it with existing tools, you as an operator can't really do very much. Your tool has to sort of support it because of the way it works. Um, yeah, yeah. But the but the good news is is that at least the assuming that the notary v two design takes the tough approach with this, which looks pretty likely, I guess I don't know likely is the right word, but looks looks like it hopefully should happen. Um, then this this will be a bit of a of a moot point. Um, but we'll see we'll see what happens. There's there's some I don't know. There's some issues in that group with um, uh, uh, getting people to appreciate that security is as important as it should be at times. But um, for the most part, I think they're going to come to the right conclusion. So I, I have faith. Like um, does anybody? Is, sorry. Yes, go ahead. So tooling is actually an interesting topic because if you work in the software supply chain best practices, the more, the more security tooling you introduce in your organization, the the bigger the attack surface for your software supply chain becomes. Well, it it, it can be. I mean, you certainly have more things that one can attack, but there's also the question of. Um, so if you do it appropriately and you're, you add something like another scanner, if your scanners are not able to modify the artifacts that would come out, right? If it's effectively a box you give your pre-built package or your, you know, your built software or your source code or whatever to, and um, it can't modify that thing it's given and put you know, a modified version back in the pipeline, then um, you, you may have additional risk of disclosure, but you don't necessarily have a risk that your clients are going to have a compromise by adding that kind of security tooling. So I think one of the, you know, not to, to name drop tools too much, but the, the Intoto uh, project here, you know, its its focus is on making sure that you don't have those unintended modifications that thing actually do run through 
all the steps they're supposed to and so on and to provide like cryptographic proof of all of that. So if you're using things like that, then adding security tools is um, in general should provide you with um, strictly better uh, security, at least security um, towards things like modification of your code. Um, yeah, build factory that's the, security, right? Yeah. Are you guys working on any uh, feature specification for the next minor versions? Was it part of what the group does? Sorry, Dean, you mean specifically um, like Kubernetes versions? Yeah, yeah, sorry. <laughs> yeah, Kubernetes minor versions, yeah. I think 121, 122, are we involved in those things or is this what the group uh, contributes as well? I believe there might be some crossover, but not directly. I think JJ or Justin might be best to, to <laughs> Okay, thank you. For the, for the most part, the individual projects are very um, disjoint from what our group does other than when we do security assessments or do things like uh, try to put things into the a landscape or a mapping or something like that. But we just don't have the depth of expertise to take um, dozens of very diverse, very different projects and like um, try to be involved in the you know, daily recommendations for the next versions of whatever's happening. Um, they tend to have their own subgroups and then they come and will sometimes talk to us or um, occasionally ask uh, people, ask for some advice or ask, you know, ask us to do an assessment um, update, but we, we don't, uh, in, in real time, we're not embedded in all the, the different groups for the most part, as far as I'm aware. Hey, um, Justin, just on the note of assessments, um, a Andrew Horton here, I brought along. Um, him and I work together and have, have done between ourselves a lot of assessments and I'd be pretty keen to get him in, involved with some of the work you, you've done for like the V2 assessments, if, if, if you'd be willing to spend a couple of minutes going over where, where that's at and what you need help with. Uh I, I would be very happy to have you to participate. Um, when I left to go to the APAC region, um, I uh, sort of turned that over uh, because I, uh, not being able to be in the meetings, it's hard to wrangle people to get them to participate and so on. Um, and uh, also when they were doing the kind of V2 redesign of the things, uh, like the original thing I had done, I intentionally stepped back because I didn't want to kind of um, overly influence, you know, like, like be the voice. Um, because I found when I would talk about things and they would suggest things, if I said, oh, you know, I think Coke sounds better than Pepsi, then everyone was like, yeah, we all like Coke too. So um, I, I sort of let that community go and do it. And so I, I intentionally am not that up to date. But uh, certainly when I did it, we always needed people and... Uh, especially people that have had experience doing it uh, will be most welcome. Well, it's nice to be welcomed. I've been having a look through some of the Google Docs, like the CNCF Cloud Native Security Map, Vanilla, and of course the Meeting Notes, which has all kinds of great links and, and interesting projects. But um, is there anything that you want people to come and join in particular? Yeah, it's a real minefield out there. I think you kind of just evaluate what's interesting to you and, and just get involved. Yeah, honestly, that's, that's the best thing to do um, is just start talking to people on issues and try to find things. Um, it's 
uh, it's also possible that there's something, in, an entire thing missing. Uh, like this whole discussion around the landscape and the map. Um, we, uh, I had a conversation um, with Brandon about this like early on and we started something about maybe a, a year and a half ago or something like that. And um, he's just kind of gone and taken this and done amazing things um, with it that is way beyond the way I'd sort of thought of it. Um, but at the same time, we had other folks like Emily, who's one of the co-chairs, Emily Fox, and a few others that had a sort of different perspective coming more from a policy side. And so um, we talked and we created almost like semi-competing things that eventually we found out a good way to separate out. And so that's why you have uh, the thing that's the neutral white paper now, and you're having something that's going to end up being more of an actual map that that does actually have projects and things on it, because I think we saw those as a each as separately valuable and a, a way to keep some measure of neutrality while still promoting CNCF projects, um, which is what uh, we're obviously supposed to do. Is, is promote like good security practices, especially related to CNCF projects. I'll show you a few links over, Andrew, with the assessments anyway. Um, I think you'd find them pretty interesting. Like there's, there's, been, there's been some work done already with existing projects. So it's probably a, a good, where I've started at least, is just checking out the format and structure of how those assessments were actually performed. Um, yeah. Yeah, sure, send it over. Um... I've been skimming through a lot of the links. I've been pulling off the uh, previous meeting um, notes while oh. we're talking, and there's heaps of really good content here. That's the hacker I know, just brain dumping all the info. <laughs> Cool. Well, hey, um, hey. I guess from my side, I've um, I just give you guys a bit of an update. Um, I've I've been spending the last probably four weeks just familiarizing myself with the repository. Um, I, I spoke to Brendan this morning and also last week, like Brendan Lum. Um, he's been really really helpful. Um, I'm as per him and uh, my combo with him. I've I've started looking into the landscape, like the V two landscape, the cloud native security map, like it's like the 20 page document or whatever. Um, then making some notes there and, and um, I started on the serverless security re research white paper too, but I wasn't really sure where that, where that was going. Like it's only kind of six pages. So I'm just waiting to chat to Aradna and, and see, cause she's leading that initiative. Um, by the way, thanks JJ for getting me in contact with her. That was great. Um, yeah. Um, I'm sure a lot of you guys saw I've been heavily promoting this um, organization on, on socials like the DevOps Slack and on LinkedIn and stuff. So for those of you who joined through through my promotion, um, thanks so much. I really, I hope you guys are actually interested in this and want to contribute because I don't know, I'll tell you from personal experience, when I started looking at this, it was like, whoa, oh my God, this is so cool. And then it was like, whoa, oh my God, there's so much information. Where the hell do I start? So if you're like a bit overwhelmed like I was, um, just feel free to ping me on Slack and I'll try to help you understand what I know, which isn't much, but I'm happy to help. Yeah, so I'm kind of new to this uh, uh, security too. So I was uh, wondering like how, how to like start uh, contributing and stuff. So I'll probably get in touch with you. Yeah, 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 man, I'm, I'm happy to help. As, as Justin said and me just before, like kind of skim through the GitHub issues. Um, a good place to start is just understand the repository. That, that's what took me a bit of time. Um, understand what the open issues are. Then you'll understand where the help's actually needed and where you can contribute. And um, 
yeah, just find something that's interesting to you. I, I think that's really important because um, if you're passionate about it, then you'll be more compelled to contribute. That's kind of one point I'd make about that. Right. right. But yeah, man, like, feel free to ping me on Slack. I'm, um, I'm Blackbeard on Slack. I'm not Matt Flannery. I'm Blackbeard. So there you go. Oh, okay. Okay, cool. <laughs> And Matt, is this the first APAC meeting for the SIG or? Uh, I think it's the second or third SIG. one. Um, yeah, like just to be clear, again, I'm not an expert here, I'm learning, but if I, if I can help any of you guys know what I've learned already, that'll just help me as well and we can learn together. So that's cool. Yeah. But um, yeah, yeah this is definitely the most Sorry. active. I was just going to say, this is definitely the most active meeting. Before this, we had, uh, I think, four participants or so. This is, I think, our third meeting. And yeah. it's mostly been, how do we get more people to show up? So yeah. good to see Matt take the charge and obviously uh, bring in a lot of fresh, uh, excited faces. It's terrific. Yeah. My, my problem, um, just on that note, like I've been following the SIG security for over a year now. Um, and... The biggest issue for me was the time zone difference. You know, if you can't if, if you can't join the meetings, you, you it's just too hard to really contribute, to be honest, because you just have no feel for what's going on. And um, just for your information, Brad and everyone else here, this is a regular cadence. So pop it into your calendar. It happens every every second Tuesday at one p.m. So at the same time. So if you could try and block out this time, um, attend the meetings. Um, we can build up a bit of a regular cadence and. Um, you know, look, it's, it's something you have to do in your own time. So, you, you know, I, I understand everyone's got day jobs and families and stuff. Um, maybe, you know, um, I read an interesting article about how to start contributing to open source recently. Um, just, you know, spend four hours a week, you know, if that works for you. And um, even that would be super appreciated. Um, I, I, personally, me, my motivations are I, I've been an advocate for DevSecOps for years. Like I started the DevSecOps Sydney meetup like three years ago. I've been preaching about container security since Docker existed. Um, so this is just a natural kind of fit for me. Um, and, you know, it's a way that I can um, get involved with a community of people that are like-minded and have similar interests and just, you know, learn more really. Um, so yeah, really, really happy to see all you guys here and um, looking forward to, to working together with you. Yeah, thanks for boosting it. I'll um, boost it in the, in the next week as well. Great, yeah. man, that'd be really cool. Great, um, I'm gonna have to drop for another meeting in a few minutes. Um, uh, but you all are welcome to continue to talk if there's more. Is there anything else as a group we should all discuss? Um, I, I think I think we've probably covered everything, Justin. I, I think, as you said, man, just to start off with, let's try and get some more people. And um, as these guys, you know, familiarize themselves with the issues, um, we'll have something to talk about. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds good. Yeah, I, I hate to... It's just a suggestion, uh, uh, Matt, uh, excellent meeting, by the way. Uh, maybe we can do some sharing of presentations. Maybe if you could, maybe somebody could start with that introductory, how to use the resource. Maybe, I don't know, this is just an idea. Use uh, this time. We, yeah, to... yeah we, we can do that. So typically there's two types of meetings that we have with SIG Security. We have, um, like the uh, working sessions, uh, and then we have ones that have some kind of presentation. Um, and we could definitely do one where we have, uh, this meeting, by the way, we labeled as a working session, but we could do one in the future where we have um, some sort of presentation that tries to give something like an overview or something like that. Um, if JJ were still here, since I think he's able to make both sets of meetings, he would really be an ideal person to do this. I, I feel like since I can't make the other meeting and haven't made them for months now, I, I wouldn't be the right person to do this, but maybe JJ or Emily or somebody could stop by and do that. Um, so I, I don't want to promise them for the next meeting, but um, 
we can we can reach out and, and see if one of them can do this sometime soon. I yeah, also, great. Just, oh, sorry. Thanks. Um, I, I also um, run a community group for the CNCF as well. So if there's any like sort of side events or, or things you want to run, we can run it through that as well if we need to, if it doesn't go through the sub channel. Okay, well, just on that note, um, Andreas and Andrew, are they are they the right directions? I don't know, I'm probably on a different like little picture here, but anyway, on my computer, I pointed to them. Uh, <laughs> those two guys are actually working with me on a like a capture the flag event. I know this is unrelated, but it's got something to do with cloud native security at least. Um, mm. but, and we've got a, like a, a, um, a number of challenges have been developed around um, <clears throat> showcasing vulnerabilities um, and flaws within Kubernetes, as in either default or misconfigured implementations or outdated implementations. And so, you know, if, if you'd be interested in promoting that, it'd, when the yeah. up, that'd be great. Yeah. Cool. yeah, we can um, make a draft even today if you want, and then we can just keep working on it and promoting it. Cool, man, I'll chat to you offline yeah. about that then. Yeah, sure. Sick. All right, well, I'm going to hop off too. So um, uh, who's going to follow up with um, JJ, Justin, about that? I'll do that. I'll do that. All right. And um, uh, yeah, thanks, man, for coming. Because as I said, if you didn't come, I, I don't know how to run these. No, you did great. Um, I'll say less. I'll say less next time. You, you just uh, let you take over. It sounds good. Um, and you, you know what you're doing, man. <laughs> All right. Sounds good. All right. We'll take care. See everybody in two weeks. All right. Thanks, guys. Yeah. Yeah. Bye. Bye, folks.